Welcome to Five Stripe Weekly. In this week's edition, we're gonna break down all things Five Stripes over the international break, as well as preview the upcoming match with Columbus Crew on the road. All that and more coming up next. Welcome to the show, Five Stripe fam. I'm AJ, this is Devin. Before we get into it, become part of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button on YouTube or hop over from Facebook and subscribe. You can now also find all of our content on the Genico USA platform, anywhere in the world on Amazon Fire TV, Roku, iOS, Google Play, and many other streaming platforms. So um, Atlanta Fan TV, you, got, you guys are the voice of the Atlanta fans. You have your finger on the pulse of what is going on there. We want to know what people are saying, what, what their biggest concern is at this point. Tell us. Get back to us. Yes. We're, gonna, we're gonna put you on twin. We're gonna continue this conversation. Let us know. What do you think? What's up, Susanna and Kalen and viewers of This Week in MLS. Yeah, you guys asked us what the pulse was of Atlanta United fans. So here goes. The fans are divided, yeah. for sure. It, it, the pendulum swings from DeBoer out to give it time. So here we are. Yeah, indeed. But uh, some of the fans think that the team hasn't delivered on its promise. We heard things like, you know, tinker, not overhaul, and uh, you know, evolution, not revolution, but there's been a lot of change. Yeah, indeed. And, you know, Frank DeBoer has also talked about where rotation will be necessary. And, yeah, I mean, a lot of the players, you find out that they're fatigued after, a, you know, maybe three, four matches. It's, uh, it's a little bit worrying for sure. But uh, also, you know, Frank DeBoer called the fans spoiled, which... Yeah, but apparently there was something lost in translation there, because spoiled means something different in Dutch <laughs> than it does in English. Yeah, but uh, you know, it's his fifth language, so it may be understandable there. Uh, but also, Frank DeBoer has also talked about some uh, weird things in terms of like Breck Shea, him being too tall to play well on turf. That was a perplexing comment for sure. But uh, yeah, also, yeah, my main bone to pick is that Frank DeBoer did not prioritize the CCL, and yeah, now pretty much we're out of that competition. Yeah, it was the last 10 minutes at El Gigante de Acero that pretty much knocked us out, and if only he would have made those subs a little bit earlier. Indeed, yeah, I mean, three subs at the 90th minute essentially when, yeah, we conceded two within the 80th uh, minutes in there, and it's just, yeah, the tie is pretty much over at that point. Now let's swing it it's back tough. to the positive side. Yeah. You got a lot of changes in this team. You're mm -hmm. missing a number 10 and replacing him with a new number 10. Right. You got a new manager in replacing a legendary manager, and mm -hmm. expectations are are super high, so you're gonna get everyone's best challenge, no matter the the opposition. It's true, and then it's also different tactics, a different philosophy, and yeah, I mean, a short off season, different cultures for new incoming players. Yeah, there's a lot of valid excuses for sure. You ask for the pulse, it's erratic. You ask for where the fan base is, it's all over the map. But understandably, I think we're gonna come together and fix this thing in the long run. Yeah, but uh, in terms of yeah, the international break, uh, it might be really helpful uh, for Frank de Boer with the existent players that haven't gone on international duty. But with those players that have gone on international duty, yeah, there's been some very, very key cogs to the attack and maybe one in the defense as well with Miles Robinson. But Yeah, our youth call-ups as well as our senior national team call-ups with Tito and Joseph and PT Martinez. You know, Tito, of course, going to Paraguay. Joseph performing yeah. well in scoring a penalty kick, hop, step, and jump mm -hmm. uh, goal for Venezuela in a short 30-minute appearance. Mm -hmm. uh, but then also got a start against Catalonia as well. Yeah, indeed. So, you know, Joseph played in both matches for Venezuela. Tito, of course, played and featured for for uh, Paraguay with Miguel, re reuniting with Miguel indeed, Almiron. Indeed. Uh, sadly, the result did not go their way as they lost 1-0 to Peru. Yep. Uh, and then, you know, obviously the 3-1 that went to Venezuela did not go very well for P.T. <laughs> Martinez. Yeah, in terms of, yeah, the prediction that Devin had in his, uh, you know, news video was I not, got the score right. It was not fantastic. I did tell you to pick Rondon. This is true. Yeah, if you were going for like a fantasy type of thing, I mean, part of it, you would have gotten some points. But uh, P.T. Martinez... Martinez did unfortunately leave the uh, Argentina-Venezuela match early and now it is diagnosed as a uh, left hamstring injury. Now the extent of the injury is unknown, but he is not going to play the second match for Argentina in this international window. But well, let's look at the positives. He wasn't stretchered off. He yeah. subbed off naturally. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, there wasn't any like, you know, 
hey, you got to take me off. There's a tear situation. Right, so right. we can look at the positives there. He was still on the sideline at the end of the match, mm -hmm. and he walked off under his own power. So hopefully it's just a strain and not the dreaded uh, Arsene Wenger three-week injury. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, also Andrew Carlton scored versus uh, their 2-1 win versus Japan. That's the U.S. men's national U-20s. It was a banger, too. If yeah. you have not seen that goal, I would definitely go watch. Beautiful placement oh, yeah. and beat the keeper. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's just like, you know, he getting into the box. I mean, he's showing that uh, that clinical attack that uh, he's uh, kind he's of. He's on the senior team. For, he's, on, he's, yeah. he's in the 18 for a reason. And mm -hmm. he's gotten minutes with, the, you know, with the 11 for for a reason. Andrew mm -hmm. Carlton is one of those homegrown players that you really want to see come do. Yep. Uh, and he's going to be given every opportunity. I honestly believe it's about finding a place for him in the attack. Yeah. So right now the minutes are going to be few and far between. But when you get them, you've got to come on and make a difference. Right. But uh, speaking of someone that's made a difference when he's come on, Miles Robinson, uh, he is playing for the U. 23s. That man is a saint. Yeah, and uh, he played 74 minutes against the Dutch as well, so that's fantastic. Speaking of the U.S. men's national team, though, they beat Ecuador 1-0, and then on this night that we're recording, Tuesday night, they're also playing Chile. And so, uh, yeah, there's a similar type of possession game that uh, Greg Berhalter is playing with uh, the U.S. men's national team that is kind of reminiscent of a fractal board system, for sure. It's something that you do when you maybe don't have as much talent. I mean, Chile is a very, very good corner ball team, mm -hmm. um, you know, and has a lot of star power in that squad. The United States would do well in a match against a team with that kind of firepower to mm -hmm. to try to hold possession a little bit because they will be so quick to counter. Yep. Um, you know, Chile is a really good squad. So yep. if the United States can make a statement, you know, hopefully Christian Pulisic can play up and mm -hmm. you know maybe score a goal. Um, maybe. 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 <laughs> but uh, yeah, and uh, so also speaking of a. U.S. Uh, national, uh, also Jeff Lorena was talked about the formation uh, and kind of the issues that they've had Hold so on, far. we forgot about one very important international call-up, and that man was Ezekiel Barco also for the Argentinian under-20s. Yes. Uh, he got basically credited for an assist on what mm -hmm. ultimately attributed to be an own goal right. uh, in an Argentinian win. Mm -hmm. uh, but he has looked really good, and people in Argentina have said that he is basically the one that's holding the water when Messi leaves on. He's the future, you know, uh, in that I mean, Argentinian that's number some, 10 shirt. Some, uh, some big boots to fill or, you know, proverbially for sure. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's one the of The expectation things. is there, but he's wearing the shirt for the Argentinian under-20s, exactly. and he's doing it well. Uh, you know, it, it leads into a lot of conversation about mm -hmm. uh, Barco in this system, mm -hmm. especially with PT Martinez. Mm -hmm. You know, Who's the real number 10? They're both creative attacking yep. midfield players, uh, but Barco is definitely showing his value at that position yep. for the Argentinian under 20 national team. So I mm. couldn't let us talk about internationals and not talk about our favorite uh, yeah. run it to the middle player. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, Maybe not the favorite for a lot of uh, some of the, the LA United fans, but uh, you know, it is what it is there. It's, uh, you know, it's a divisive fan base for sure. But, it's all positivity over here right now. Yeah. But uh, anyway, back to Jeff Lerwinowitz and the formation that uh, they've been playing and how during the Philadelphia Union match, they switched from a 3-4-3 to a 4-3-3 to a 4-2-3-1 or a 3-5-2 rather even. Uh, and so, yeah, they switched several times within the match, of course, because, uh, you know, they started off the match in a very strange diamond 3-4-3. Uh, it was weird. It yeah, was like a 3-2-3-2 <laughs> weird setup with... with Mm -hmm. You know, people up front switching positions. There was just no real right. formation to it. It looked like a bunch of guys that said we're gonna we're gonna throw a bunch of stuff against the wall and see what mm -hmm. sticks. Right. So for them to actually say that they were trying new stuff out and moving into other formations, just run the three five two. You won MLS Cup with it. Like it's I, it's also I mean it's <laughs> different personnel as well. You yeah. Three five two, and so you know the counter attack is not as deadly as it were without a Miguel Miron spearheading that. Right. But you also have uh, just a familiarity that Jeff Lerman is talking about. And so I'm gonna read this quote. 
If it's something you've done in the past, you saw it at the end of the Monterey game. You kind of switch to something you are familiar with. It fits like a lock and key. If you are trying something new like we were at the beginning of the game, it depends on the prep you've been able to do and if you are ready for that. I think that once we made a shift in that game, things opened up. At this point, you play every three days and travel so much, you aren't training these things. And that's a very valid point, is that, yeah, they haven't been able to train these tactics and this philosophy to the effect where they are actually prepping for this specific opponent in mind. And so, yes, there is that, but Which switching. brings it back to why do you yeah. implement a new system? Exactly. Well, like, like why not do it gradually? You exactly. know you're coming into fixture congestion. You know that at the end of the month, you've got what, 26 days and yeah. two matches in 26 days? Seven and 24, so it's a lack of foresight for sure that- It doesn't make sense. Yeah, it, it, that's really, again, my main bone to pick is that why did we not try what was working and then, you know, try that in CCL and then you can try other tactics within the other matches. So, yeah, I mean, maybe easier said than done, but it is, yes, just uh, the, the frustrating part about it for sure for me. <sighs> but uh, anyway, let's move on to where PT has apparently said that he's not exactly been the most happy so far in MLS. But uh, he said that he wants to go to Europe, uh, which is not news. We definitely news. knew that he was wa wanting to do that before he even came to the team. But uh, yeah, I mean, he wants to get there because yes, uh, you know, it's the cachet. It's the, uh, you know, maybe the bigger paycheck and whatnot. But uh, unfortunately- it's really, it's really simple. And here's the comparison, and I don't mean to interrupt, but we're in the middle of March Madness and we're watching a lot of great players. It's. It's like Duke fans being upset that Zion Williamson's gonna declare for the NBA draft. Like, it's gonna happen. We, we, we get it. Like, play well while you're here. Miguel Almiron was a two-time MLS All-Star and a runner-up for the MLS MVP. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't walk your way to the majors. Come on, PT. And I don't think he's saying that. I think he's acknowledging that, uh, yes, the European clubs didn't come in for him. Uh, and he knows that it's also a business. And so, yeah, he just has to perform. And, yeah, he's just going to get his mind space into the right, uh, you know, into the right uh way to be able to be successful in MLS. And let's talk so, about okay. happiness. His, his, the mother of his child and his daughter are still in Argentina. Yes. That would weigh on anybody's, anybody's mind. Yeah. You're also thrown basically from a, a, a highly volatile situation, you know, in that match between, you know, River Plate and Boca Juniors mm -hmm. that had to be moved because of the fan sure, violence. Exactly. And, you know, it, there, that was crazy. There was, mm -hmm. that was extended over a month and they had to move exactly. it to Madrid. And, you know, so I can understand him wanting to get away from that situation mm -hmm. because you never want your profession to be life and death I guess unless you're a Navy SEAL or something like that but, sure but if you're a professional footballer you, you, mm -hmm. you certainly want to be able to leave the match on the pitch and, and yeah. go and, and live a life with your family so right. I understand him wanting to to get out mm -hmm. um, and Atlanta United provided the best economical situation for River Plate mm -hmm. and for the player at the time PT makes decent money here it's not mm -hmm. like he's playing for pittance mm -hmm. you know there are other players that we can talk about contract situations that that you know are are going to feel ag yeah. aggrieved by the money that he makes versus the performance that he's put in so far yeah. but again just like with the coach it's early mm -hmm. he, these con these, these comments i feel are taken a little bit out of context yeah. i did a video on it asking the fans about it this week mm -hmm. and, and and again just like with the debore out versus the give it time people mm -hmm. the, the pendulum swings and the one thing that i can say about pt martinez is you don't win south american player of the year mm -hmm. by luck and yeah know, exactly and so uh yeah it also is maybe overblown because yes, the South American media is uh, a little bit tabloidy at times, but also- At times? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, TYC Sports, a very well-respected yes. uh, source also, I mean, they kind of termed it as P.T. Martinez's confession. I mean, that kind of uh, pretty much kind of- uh, It's clickbait. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it you know forces the narrative a little bit in a way that- yeah, I mean, it makes does sound- uh, Anytime way. you say a player is unhappy, it doesn't- And then don't immediately list the reasons why in mm -hmm. the headline. It's sensationalism. And, sure. and, and 
It's totally understandable for a player in a new country with new teammates mm -hmm. in a situation that's not going as well yeah. with the expectation level as high as his is. Yeah, and he's also still a tourist in this country. Exactly. He has not acclimated at all, I'm sure, because, yeah, of all the travel, of just not even being able to, you know, figure out, oh, where's the place that I'm going to eat yeah. where, there's, there's um, on simple, my day off. The simple like, pleasures, like, ugh. where's my grocery store? Where yeah. do I get the kind of food that I'm used to eating? He sure. played at River Plate. He's from Argentina. He, I'm sure he likes a certain style of food. Right. And granted, he walked into a situation with players like LGP and Eric Rometty mm -hmm. that are We're Argentinian that live here. Yeah. They get it and are, and are more than willing to be mm -hmm. you know, accommodating to a new player. But you can only hang out with them so long. And there's there's a companionship, like we said, from his the mother of his child and his daughter that's just missing and that I think would 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 make anybody's life more more Absolutely. more difficult especially being thrown into a highly competitive situation yeah. playing in a stadium with 70,000 people that want to see you bang in golazos right. you and know yeah, I mean, that's the just what it is are high and so I think yeah uh, in terms of anybody that is not impressed with PC Martinez I think if anything if uh, you're not giving PT Martinez time. I think it's yeah. We need to definitely give this guy pump those the space. brakes. Yeah. Pump those brakes. But uh, you know, let's move on to the Parley Kit Leak, which was uh, very interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's essentially the World Oceans Day uh, type of awareness for uh, pretty much MLS, and you know, you have the kind of blue mint. Whatever, whatever I dig color. It. I dig it. Uh, and then you also have the darker for the away. With the mint in it, you know, yeah, exactly. in the, whereas last year it was more black and white. Exactly. And so, yeah, I mean, I think uh, these are very fresh. It uh, definitely makes you think of the ocean, for sure. So. It makes me think Arsenal third kit. Yeah, uh, Real also, Madrid. Yeah, Real Madrid. Also, mm -hmm. I remember a couple years back when Barcelona had those kits that had, like, mm -hmm. the, the red and the blue in them, but had the... The uh, the tealish. <laughs> I yeah, don't even know what right. color to call it. Indeed, mint, teal, green, blue. Exactly. It's it's cool. I dig it. I think that it's yeah. an awesome idea, and the fact that it goes, you know, mm -hmm. to to such a good cause, and right. the fact that it raises awareness for ocean cleanup is right. awesome. And also, it's made out of uh, the plastic bottles in the ocean, and you know, threaded through all the with the parlay. So there's gonna be a little small amount made. So if you're lucky to get one, then I want yeah. one. I totally want yeah. one. <laughs> everybody knows. I, everybody knows. I try to get as many kits as I possibly can. Yeah. I did not get a parley last year, uh, so I'm definitely trying to get my hands on one this year. For sure. I'm, they're going to be, as always, uh, yeah, just very highly coveted and with just such little, little inventory on that, it's just actually not wise. Just, why not sell a whole bunch of them? There's probably not a lack of plastic in the ocean. I was about to say, you, you, this, <laughs> it seems like something that's very short-sighted. Like Adidas, come on. Like, suck the ocean dry of plastic. Yeah. Make as many parlay kits as possible. Right. Come on, guys. Quit yeah. stalling. I need one. Yeah, indeed, indeed. But anyway, let's move on to uh, where we should all vote for Julian Gressel as the German football ambassador. Yep. Right now, he's sitting above the likes of Mark Ter Stegen of Barcelona. Leroy uh, Sané of Manchester yeah, City. Julian, Julian Draxler. Draxler from PSG. Yeah, I mean, you know, those are really, really big names in the world of German football. And wow, I mean, he's uh, sitting above them right now. But keep voting him. We'll have it. Uh, in the description box below, and but, you have uh, to you have to vote for three people. Yeah. So be sure to take a look at where they are yeah. and vote for the people on the bottom. Yeah. Put jo put Julian at number one, and then whoever's at like number nine or ten, throw him a second yeah. place vote. If you haven't heard of the the player, maybe vote for them. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, anyway, let's uh, also move on to where the contract negotiations between Julian Gressel and Atlanta United apparently have stalled completely, and uh, they are shelving it for the moment. And well. Gressel declined to comment and Atlanta United declined to comment. So it's one of those things where, I mean, yeah. I think it's attributed to two things. Yeah. Number one, he's a rookie that was, or he's he's still on his rookie scale basically from when he was sure. drafted in the Super Draft. Mm -hmm. uh, he was drafted with the eighth pick. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so his his money is capped in a certain way that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of paltry. Uh, also, too, I believe MLS is getting ready to do a new uh, CBA negotiation, which yeah, could might be. allow you know more Gam, more Tam, maybe more money, maybe a fourth DP slot. We would definitely need 
all of that. Yeah, really. <laughs> we, 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 there needs to be a renegotiation, but a lot of that is yeah. going to depend on TV rights, which, as we know, uh, benefited the Premier League and and, and yeah. all these other leagues that are signing American TV packages. Like mm-hmm. you now see Serie A on ESPN, and you see yeah. the German league, the Bundesliga, on Fox yeah. Soccer. So th- the fact that these these leagues are signing these massive TV deals benefits the teams within them because of the revenue sharing model. Sure. So mm-hmm. if MLS could somehow bring in some more mm-hmm. revenue from from a major broadcasting, then network, Gressel could be capped, but but it's yeah. at the moment right now, it's Tough. not yeah, not the best situation for him and so uh, in terms of uh, you know being able to get that right. raise, so call it, it what it is. There might be some speculation that you know he you, could you, leave. Yeah, you think he might go to a Bundesliga club? Maybe. I mean, there's 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 possibility that I you know Julian is is German. Now, granted, he married an American girl. He loves it here. Mm-hmm. Nobody is advocating that he leaves. Mm-hmm. But if he was given the opportunity to play at a German Bundesliga. Team. I'm not talking about Bayern Munich or Dortmund or Schalke. I'm mm-hmm. talking about one of the. I don't want to say lower level, but I want to say lower you know, division. A, a, a you know a lower a lower tier team like like yeah. an Eintracht Frankfurt or a mm-hmm. an Augsburg. You know, I could see him going to one of those teams and doing really really yeah. well. And I understand that there's a brand that he's building here, but if he can make in a month what he makes in an entire season, he'd be a fool to not go. Well, yeah, but it's also that it's the uh, the brand part where yes. He wouldn't be part of this German uh, football ambassador no. list if he were playing in Bundesliga. Unfortunately, he just wouldn't have the optics that uh, you know to make him in that because he's a star at Atlanta United, but if he might not be a star at Hamburg, he might not be a star at Frankfurt or and Hoffenheim so, or Hoffenheim, Frankfurt. Exactly, and so it's it's something that yeah, it is going to be difficult if he does move over there to play a starring role. But if he you know, it just depends on what he values. And so, really, at the end of the day, you know, that's what he's got to evaluate. And the situation we'll is going to be difficult for Atlanta United moving forward in a lot of ways. A lot of the original 17s contracts are coming to an end. You have difficult decisions with players like Julian Gressel, mm-hmm. and you have difficult decisions with players like Brad Guzan and mm-hmm. uh, Leandro Gonzalez Perez. Sure. A lot of these guys, they're coming off of a championship. They, they, they've earned bonuses, they've earned, mm-hmm. you know, just payout. You know, you look at a player like Julian Russell, who's 25, like this next contract for him has to basically set him for life. Nothing is guaranteed in this. Yeah, sport. he's also 25, and you know, if he were to move to a Bundesliga team, the time team, is now. Yeah, absolutely, because in two years' time, yeah, I mean, he may not. He hasn't proven himself in a European league, and then you there's know there's no for, resale value in yeah. two years' time on a three-year deal. You're 30 by exactly. the time the club's looking to move you on. Yeah. There's no there's no resale value in that. Mm-hmm. That's not how the market works. Right. So if a, you get a player like Miguel Amaron who makes the move at the age that he does, mm-hmm. you know because of the promise and because of the ability and because right. Newcastle actually believes he's going to be there yeah. for years to come mm-hmm. if they can lock down a coach like Rafa Benitez. Now with Julian, his next move, his next contract, if it's here in Atlanta United, it's he, we're gonna have to pay him. I mean, I'm talking like yeah. Ico Parra money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It'll have to be near a mill and, uh, you know, that just gets into a territory where you have to balance the books because of the, the salary cap structure. So anyway, let's move on to Atlanta United 2. They played uh, Charlotte Independence to a 3-3 draw and Romario Williams. It was with- a shootout of craziness, man. Yeah. It was 2 nothing in like the 80-something minute and then all of a sudden it's 3-2 Charlotte yeah. and then Romario Williams, you know, Pulls it back and scores the hat trick. Now some of his yeah. goals were beautiful. His oh, his yeah. his opening of the hips and slotting it in the lower right hand body corner. shape, perfect. Oh yeah, Thierry Henry, very Thierry Henry esque. And, and, and I I've always loved that you know that that ability to throw the keeper because the keeper's obviously got to protect the near post and the ability right. to slot it back post is a lot more difficult than it looks. Right. It takes a lot of balance, takes a lot of skill. Hats off to you, Romero. He's always done well in the USL. It's when he comes exactly. up to MLS that he seems to struggle. Well, I think he hasn't given uh, been given consistent playing time, and that's main, mainly I think the issue. And I think maybe his uh, his touch, maybe his uh, you know dribbling isn't as elite as it is in USL. So there is the difference in well, talent, know, talent level. Ability. And then let's yeah. also talk about, speaking of playing time, let's talk about some crucial minutes that were played mm-hmm. this week by the man himself, the Joker, returning from the broken clavicle, Mr. Yeah. Franco Escobar. Yeah, actually, Huge to you know, see him get some minutes. Yeah, exactly. came in and played over an hour, you know, did well yeah. with, with, with Atlanta United too. Uh, you know, it, Fitness, he, super important for him to yeah. build up for possibly 
playing a part in the weekend. So. We, we we need Franco Escobar back in the in the starting yeah, we eleven. Need him bad in Not a just bad the way. eighteen. We need him in the starting eleven as quickly as possible. Right. He gives you so many options. If you're going to run a back three, he can be your right center back. Mm-hmm. If you're going to run a back four, he can be your right back. You know, it's. It's yeah. so crucial. Plus, as long as he can avoid, you know, Brad Guzan, he's he's been pretty, you know, yeah. pretty rock solid. It was a freak injury, you mm-hmm. know, a broken a broken clavicle, clavicle. Mm-hmm. can happen, at, you know, at, to anybody at any point. Um, so it's not a knee injury. It's not right. a muscular injury that he's got to work his way back from. It's literally just running fitness. Yeah, you know. So I, I'm really ready to see what Franco Escobar can bring to our defense. Some 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 attacking prowess when he does attack, exactly. and then also just some some physicality. Right, because Frank de Boer has mentioned that he's had to maybe persist with a shape because he hasn't had the versatility of a Franco Escobar. So which yeah. opens up a whole other can of worms because there's no reason why losing one player should throw off your entire defense setup but I'm not gonna get negative because everything's positive today. yeah it's uh that's kind of on the front office a little bit for sure and you know getting the transfer business done but anyway let's move on into, we got a ton of left backs <laughs> yeah into more transfer business actually that uh, a rumor that Lucio Acosta has been linked with Turkish side Fenerbahce I mean it's just going from PSG Fenerbahce. It's I mean, moving from it Paris bad, to Istanbul. But... It's still European competition level right. club. But if it takes away Lucio Acosta from a DC United, that, I mean, it, I, selfishly, that bodes well for Atlanta United Absolutely. for sure, because, I mean, DC United look very potent. But, I mean, from an MLS side and, you know, thinking about uh, the, comp- uh, the you know, talent staying in MLS, uh, I think... It would definitely be a blow be to DC. Decent. It'd be a blow to MLS. But Super League is a UEFA qualifying league. They are. You're talking about, you know, Fenerbahce is, is a very, very good team. Besiktas is a very, very good team. So those are, you know, those are, those are clubs that play in Champions League and if Lucho Acosta, you know, not getting his dream move to PSG in odd situations, gets an opportunity to go to Europe and it benefits Atlanta United, hey man, I'll pack your bags for you. (laughs) But anyway, let's move on to the mailbag. You guys send in these questions through IG story. Please continue to do so and we might answer your question in the future. First question comes from Jacob Wutke. Besides Almiron, who is your most missed player? Yeah, I mean, are we talking all time here? Is this like should we run down the yeah, list? It's, all time. It's, uh, it, all, nothing all against two, these players, but I mean, we're talking about like, some odd Yeah, monster. but I mean, if you think yeah. about, it, there's like a there's Jeremy Bloom, there's uh, or no uh, Mark Bloom, Mark Bloom, sure. there's uh, <laughs> there's there's Heath that left. Harrison. Yeah, yeah, Harrison well, Heath. There's Kenwin here? Jones. Here there, uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Greg Garza. It's Greg Garza. Yeah. I mean, there's absolutely no question. Like, I yeah. mean, uh, aside from everything that he did within the community, you know, yeah, consummate. Team yeah, player type of guy. When uh, he was healthy, he was an all star. Exactly. He got hurt in the all star game. Right. <laughs> exactly. It's it's brutal uh, the type of injuries that he's had to endure. Uh, but it's one of those. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, we'll see if we can replace him. George Bello is the heir apparent so far. But... Mikey Ambrose is deputized. Breck Shea right. has, has has played the position as well. Yeah. But Greg Garza has been missed, yeah. and it's also telling when mm-hmm. an away player returns, you know, and gets mm-hmm. a standing ovation upon entering as a right. substitute. Indeed. So all the love to Garza and the family. Wish you all the best in Cincinnati. Just not when we play you. Yeah, indeed, indeed. good. But uh, next question comes from David Atkins. How might our tactics look different with Franco Escobar coming back? So yeah, I mean, that's where it is where we can play him in multiple positions yeah. as that right center back, uh, as that right back, as that right wing back. And so he's got that that just utility that you can play him uh, where you need you know some attacking from that position as well as uh, stout heading. He's one of the best headers on He's the team. He's just a in... big physical presence. Yeah. It's another defender that, that you pair next to Miles Robinson and LGP mm-hmm. in whatever formation they decide to run. That back three or three of that back four yeah, I like needs to be those three players because you're literally telling the other team it's going to be a long day. Yeah, exactly. They, they, all of them are pretty quick. They're all fairly uh, large enough that, you know, heading a ball is not really an issue. And uh, Franco Escobar and LGP are both really adept on the ball. So, yeah, I mean, you know. Uh, and Miles bad, has you know, gotten better. I mean, let's, better. Let's, let's be 100% honest. His foot skills were not of the top level last mm-hmm. season. And he's... He's, he's still improving. he's not a hundred percent there, but I'm also not cringing when he's passing the ball. For sure. So, yeah, and he's know. played a diagonal here and there that hasn't looked uh, you know completely aloof. So it's, and, it's and, good. And if anybody speaks an ill word of that man at this point in time, they're just right. a fool because he's the only reason that we're not zero seven. <laughs> 
Uh, next question comes from Landon Schaefer six. What would be worse for an injury, PT or Joseph? Landon, you shut your mouth. How dare you? You shut your mouth. <laughs> No, but in all, in all honestly, mouth. it's uh, really, let's not even interrupt. I'm not doing this. I said <laughs> I said the, that if, if Julian Gressel got hurt, we'd be in a bad, bad way. That's the exact same thing that happened. I remember like Doug Roberson tweeted in as I was saying that on a fan cam. Yeah. So uh, let's, let's, let's just not, let's even, just not even, let's nope. not even, butterflies and rainbows, man. Yep. It let's didn't even, that question didn't even happen. Yep. JDR la, asks, la, la, la. <laughs> oh, he's doing some Big Hero 6 all of a sudden, yeah. <laughs> uh, JDR asks, is Gressel available to be called up to U.S. men's national team? If he is, do you think he deserves a call? So, yeah, yes, he just got married. And There's a lot of American processes girl. involved here. Yeah, it's a, it's a longer process than I think we all realize. No. So, yes, does he deserve a call? I think yes. Um, it's one of those he definitely would be a pretty key cog into this uh, U.S. men's national team in terms of uh, a lot of his utility, I think. I think, again, we're running into that situation mm -hmm. where, especially Burhalter going and playing younger kids, mm -hmm. the time is now. Yeah. He would need to declare now. Mm -hmm. He's not starting for Germany. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, he's he's 25 right. and not getting younger. You can't turn back the clock. Burhalter has shown a want to play a younger lineup. Mm -hmm. So if he's going to do that, we need to figure out that paperwork now because yeah. as a right mid, as a right wing back, as, as anything that Burhalter would really want him to play, I think mm -hmm. Julian Gressel could be effective for the USMNT. Yeah, his service from the right is really, I think, uh, elite in MLS that, uh, I mean, I I think really, really could anywhere, really. But um, yeah, the time is now. And yes, he is married, but there's a whole lot of, of processes that, mm -hmm. that go into that. Yep. I'm sure that I'm sure that uh, you know, USSF could work could work it through if need be, if they mm -hmm. really wanted the player. But again, you know, the time is now. If that's going to happen, and I just don't see it happening. Yeah. Next question comes from Eduardo V14 with a back line of four defenders. Who would be the two center backs to start? Now, without giving away our uh, you know preview coming up, I think uh, though, I mean the two center backs, I think, I think generally and on form right now, yes, have to be Miles Robinson and LGP. There could be an argument for pairing the two Argentinians together uh, if Escobar is ready, because mm -hmm. uh, Miles can play on the right. Yeah, but but uh, you've I seen mean, you've seen Escobar on the right, and you've seen Miles be stellar yeah, as a center back. So he has not played really on the right per se, and so that's really the difference. Yeah, I think. that that but. pairing that pairing of Miles and LGP has proven to be effective. Mm -hmm. So I would keep that. Uh, it's it's very smart. Uh, yeah. I, 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 there's there's really no other names that, that you pencil in, especially if you run a back four. Yeah, I mean, apologies to Michael Parkhurst, of course, I mean, but yeah. he's, yeah, he's, at this point, I mean, can you sit Miles Robinson over Parky? I mean, it's tough. So, anyway, uh, last question comes from me cute P, I think. Uh, do you think Atlanta United would make any moves in the summer transfer window? That's tough. It, it, you know, because at that point in time, you're really talking about trying... It, trying to bring in a player in the middle of your season. It's yeah. very similar to what Newcastle had to do in January. Mm -hmm. it, you know, yeah. it, we also have the June window where you can make moves within MLS, yep. in, you know, to fill a hole. Or I May. think yeah. I think we mm -hmm. we really need right back depth. Like that's going to be a yeah, big Yeah, that's the main big part move. is the yeah, because you've seen completely how uh, we've just been bereft of any sort of uh, serviceable options. At right back, and the so, bigger fear is it is a team coming in and making a big offer for sure. a Julian Gressel, making a big offer like like mm -hmm. was bantered about from Boca for LGP. Sure. You're know, seeing some of these players that mm -hmm. are on contracts that are running down. I know it was mentioned that there's some player options and some team options in some situations, but over in the Premier League, when a player runs down to the last six months of his contract, he can sign with another team. It's yeah. called a Bozeman transfer. Mm -hmm. And basically, the, the team that he's on receives nothing. Yeah. So, you know, there may be some situations where contracts need to be worked out ahead of time, or we risk losing a player for free. Uh, yeah. I, 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 the summer transfer window for us is always going to be a little bit less involved because we're in season. Mm -hmm. It's going to be more of a reaction to, like we said, depth issues or mm -hmm. injury issues. Yeah, I, and I think it's also, you know... Unless Paul Pogba wants to come play with his brother. I mean, I'm all, I'm all about that. Yeah, 
I think uh, in terms of depth at other positions, I think we're nearly there pretty much. Uh, yeah, anyway, yeah, I'm just going to ignore that comment pretty much. But, uh, <laughs> and I think Tanner would love that, of course. Mezzanine, come gonna, on down. Never going to happen. But anyway, uh, in terms of that, that just means that... I mean, PT was supposedly talking to Messi about MLS, you know I mean? Yeah, exactly. Where else would you want to go other... You certainly don't want to go to enter Fort Lauderdale, play on that... <laughs> Racetrack Ju Jurassic Park look alike. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm already oh, starting the rivalry. Right. Let's let's make it happen. <laughs> yeah, you, the one who's wearing pink is uh, yeah bashing. Uh, Get a know, stadium. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's kind of looking like Fire Festival. Oh uh, God. Uh, anyway, let's uh, let's move on. It's an experience. Yeah. <laughs> let's move on into the match preview, and it's this Saturday, 7:30 at Matt Free Stadium against Columbus Crew. Yeah, it's a team that we've historically handled in the regular season. Of course, yes, they had that one over us in the playoffs, but we won't really talk about that too yeah. much. But uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of that, we've uh, played them with uh, a 3-1 win at home in 2017, a 2-0 away win. Uh, it was the other 0-0 in the playoff, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you have the 2018 with a 2-0 away win and a 3-1 home win. Which so, featured the Miggy like 60-yard burst and decide that I'm going to yeah. bury this past Stefan. Mm -hmm. You know, Columbus is a very interesting team in a very interesting situation. Yeah. You can never count them out because they always qualify for the playoffs. Yeah. Even even in their darkest hour, in the Anthony Precourt hours, you know, uh, they, <laughs> they were still very. They very were still good, good. And, yeah. and and you look at this squad. Still going to have Zach Steffen. Still going to uh -huh. have Federico Iguain. Still uh -huh. going to have Giassi Zardes. Yeah. You know, still has and talent at just about every position. Right. And a, and a new coach that is very experienced in this league and also has won an MLS Cup in Caleb Porter. Yep. And of course, was courting a Darlington Nagby in the offseason as well. So, yeah, I mean, they're a very formidable bunch for sure. And so, I think, uh, you know, against them, we really have to play to their weaknesses for sure. And, um, you know, where they have some trouble, where they foul players in yeah. really dangerous areas. And I think, you know, with a Barco, with, a, you know, a maybe. Tito or Joseph, you know, let's earn those fouls in and around the box and uh, really try to... Let's make our possession yeah, count. Exactly. It doesn't have to be a shot every time, but let's yeah. at least put the pressure on because just mm -hmm. like AJ mentioned, they will foul yeah. and they will foul in bad areas. Mm -hmm. And I would much rather have Barco or, you know, or, or, or Gressel or somebody lining up over a free kick, you know, six yards outside the box right. as opposed to just possession that lulls our players to sleep sure sure indeed but uh yeah because on that columbus can counter very quickly giassi's artist has the speed federico Iguain has the craftiness oh, he's got that lob down pat yeah, he does and so it's uh it's they, can, they can counter you real quick yeah and that's that's bit us before atlanta united yeah. has that ability to look great for 83 minutes and then just have a a, a, a brain switch off moment sure and, and exactly. suddenly uh, three points becomes one mm -hmm. and then one point becomes none yeah and so that's where it's really important for us because they also play a brand of possession football as well yep. but uh you know we also have to really keep in mind that well they are actually quite good at protecting their lead as well and so oh we, they bunker they yeah. will definitely bunker down yeah so we really need to uh have that importance of being able to strike first and you know if we strike first also strike often we also need to understand that the blueprint is out there teams yeah. teams have spread the word if you want to beat atlanta united bunker yeah and it's kind of <laughs> been you know uh last season where we've uh, that was what we had to really worry about all season was how do we break the bunker? How do we uh, really, you know, get uh, really good chances out of a low block? And that's really been, uh, you know, sometimes the Achilles heel where also we figured it out in the 3-5-2. And, uh, you know, hopefully we see some sort of way this year that we are, you know, kind of uh, just... Uh, the, the just take your chances. Exactly. Just the, take your chances, please. You know, but just the, <laughs> the mistakes that we've made so far, I think, can be rectified. And that's really where I think we can, uh, you know, just build on that. For I sure. also believe but, we can benefit from the time off. Now, granted, when everybody gets back into training, because as we sure. pointed out, there was six players missing. Exactly. You know, and, and all six of those important. are all pretty important. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but in terms of Franco Escobar, yeah, he, of course, ha is back in the team. In terms of uh, the injury report, it's not looking... 
that bleak at all. Put him right really, in. It's only PT Martinez with the left hamstring. So it's uh, just a question of if he's going to play a part or if he's going to be out for a while. Which Let's put it this way. If it's a strained back. hamstring, let him rest. You've got another week off and you don't you don't play New England until what, April 12th? Yeah. I believe it is. So uh -huh. so you've got another week off after this that if you can give him rest, have him, have you know, mm -hmm. he's already mentioned being somewhat, you know, fatigued. Yeah. He's mentioned not being fully fit, having not had the time to recover yep. you know from his schedule with river plate mm -hmm. if he is even if it's just a nagging hamstring injury if you can give him the opportunity to rest and play barco and mm -hmm. play tito and play jodas joseph uh -huh. do it uh, that, that would be my my advice right. i know i don't hold you know ussf coaching a licenses like Frank de Boer does but my one bit of advice was don't mess around with hamstring injuries because yeah. they can get real bad real fast yeah exactly i think let that uh heal itself first before you rush anyone back from that type of injury right. but speaking on that let's get into our predicted 11 and i'll go first uh in terms of uh for me i think it's going to be um yeah formation i guess is the main part here first and then we'll get into the philosophy of it why don't but, you go uh, first aj tell yeah. us you're starting 11. yeah i will do that um <laughs> so i think it's gonna be uh i think it's gonna be a Four through three, so Guzan between the sticks, of course, uh, and Escobar coming in as that right back, and it's Robinson and LGP as the uh, center back partnership, and I think I I have Ambrose as my left back. So uh, you know, four man back line, uh, guys who are who understand their positions as yeah. well, but. Robinson hasn't exactly played uh, in MLS level a two-man uh, you know partnership in you know center back. So yes, it will be a little bit of a transition. Hopefully, he can acclimate himself. I don't have uh, qualms that he you know won't because yeah, I think between Robinson and LGP, uh, one being more of the stout defensively, one being more of the uh, ball playing center back, you have that uh, kind of uh, really- He's saying one is the sizzle and one is the steak. Yeah, it's Esco just, Escobar it's that being there to protect on one side. Mm -hmm. And then you have, like you said, you have Miles Robinson and LGP paired as the center backs mm -hmm. with Ambrose, who's who on the left side has been rock solid. Yeah. So that's, that's a decent back four. Mm -hmm. and, and like we said, with LGP, he can give you that moment of brilliance. He can also yeah. give you that the, the dangerous header on a free kick. Yeah, and uh, he'll, he'll want to. Yeah, exactly, on a, or on a set piece, right. And uh, he will venture forward, which, yeah, Miles Robinson probably won't do that. And he's so the stake. He will be there. Uh, he's the stake. He's sure. literally the wall that just keeps everything out. He's the reason you're not 0 7. He's the guy that clears yeah. the ball off the line, Miles right. Robinson. Indeed, indeed. But, uh, Cuckoo, ka choo. Yeah, in that three man uh, midfield, it will be Remetti for me, uh, who will probably be that, uh, that pivot. And uh, yeah, I think Gressel, uh, who will probably sneak out over to the right, provide some service as well. And also Nagby, uh, so you know, no ten in this system. It's more just two guys that can, you know, really go up and down. And yeah, I think that gives us that energy that we need, and also some solidity. And then I think it's uh, Barco on the left. I think it's Joseph up top. I think it's Tito who gets the start on the right. Uh, so yeah, uh, in terms of there's uh, maybe a little bit of fluidity between that Barco maybe you know sneaks into the ten position a little bit more. Uh, Tito and Joseph, kind of more of the roaming strikers. So I think that, in that sense, um, you know, I want them to maybe take a little bit more risks. But it's one of those Frank de Boer probably doesn't really, uh, you know, doesn't really, uh, uh, doesn't really take philosophy. the handbrake off. Yeah, and so it's still very defensive. Right, but so. I think still though, you know, a ball over the top, Tito will be able to run after those balls, and I think you need that type of energy. Especially if, uh, you know, a Columbus crew is going to possess a lot, you know, there might be some space in that back line to exploit. In your last match against Philadelphia, it was a cross into a five foot five central attacking midfielder yeah. that then scored a header <laughs> that kept you from losing. Yeah. So um, I hope that they do a little bit more of an offensive change. Yeah. Um, I like the idea of four at the back, although mm -hmm. for me, it's time to take the training wheels off, take the band aid off. And put George Bellow at left back. Okay. Um, he's not listed on the injury report. He's played for the Atlanta United two team. Mm -hmm. it's, t it's time to show what you got. It's time to nut up, as they say. You know. Yeah, uh, nut up or shut up. It's, it's time to show what you have. We yeah. both agree on the LGP Miles center back pairing. Mm -hmm. We've mm -hmm. talked about it. We've covered it. And then of course on the right, 
ready to see the Joker back. Let's bring Escobar. Just avoid Brad Guzan. We should be gold. Yeah. You know, <laughs> in that center mid pairing also too, you know, I went with a three. So I've got a four, three. Mm -hmm. uh, my three, of course, being very similar to yours. Remedi playing more of a stopper role mm -hmm. uh, with Nagby kind of floating left, but center and Gressel kind of floating more right and yeah. center. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that kind of pivot in the three. Mm -hmm. uh, then I actually want to see a four, three, one, two. Yeah. So my one would actually see Barco sliding into a true 10 role. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see him play in the style of like a Mesodozel, where he's actually able to feed two attacking players. Yeah. Those two attacking players, of course, being Tito and Joseph Martinez, who I would give the ability to float. So Joseph is not isolated between two center backs for the majority of the match. He would have Tito to cause a little havoc yeah. and to make the runs. I feel like having two up top makes us less predictable, mm -hmm. and it also makes it harder for teams to press high. Sure. Yeah, uh, definitely agree. Four, three, one, two. Yeah, okay. I mean, uh, you know, if Frog de Boer is, you know, kind of maybe experimenting with formations, who knows, but uh, at least hopefully, you know, experimenting with the philosophy. Call it bit. what it is, man. You've got Barco <laughs> in an opportunity to show what he did well for Argentina's under-20 sure. team. You've got PT Martinez potentially being given an opportunity to rest. Mm -hmm. Marco yeah. needs the ball at his feet. Yeah. Joseph needs service. Mm -hmm. Tito needs service. Yeah. Let the man do what he was brought here to do. Yeah, and I think yeah, Gressel and Nagby can provide that service for that uh, yeah. that front two as well. So I mean, I think it could happen. But let's get into the score prediction. What do you think is gonna happen? Zach Steffen makes things difficult always. Yes. Um, there are goals in this match, but it's gonna take you know excellent performances mm -hmm. um so they're gonna score and, yeah. and that's the other thing too mm -hmm. like atlanta united still isn't isn't solid enough defensively to where we can predict clean sheets just yet sure. so uh, as much as i would love to see us be able to pull three points i think this is a match that screams draw okay uh with a lot of goals i think this is going to be a 2-2 Okay. All right. Um, I'm gonna be yeah a little bit more where uh, I think yeah there's gonna be even more goals. Uh, oh, but wow. I think it's gonna be a three two, and uh, yeah I think though um, three two to who? Atlanta United is gonna oh, win. Oh my god! Finally, kind of get that three points uh, for the season so far. Get that road been... form back in in, exactly. you know, in the it, way that it was yeah. last season when we Hopefully were record setting. We can, exactly. It's. Yeah, it's maybe that the issue is that, yes, uh, our road form has been pretty poor so far uh, in this season, but I think we might be able to turn around. Maybe uh, this rest has really done everyone well. He says pretty poor. Call it what it is. You got, you got stomped at Erdiano. You got yeah. beat at Monterey. You got beat at DC. Yeah. It hasn't been good at all. It hasn't been good. So, you know, this would be a great step in the right direction. Certainly would. And it so. would be an opportunity to get points against an Eastern Conference opponent yeah. that's going to be challenging for playoff positioning because they mm -hmm. always, always, always do. And that gets us to our question of the day, and it is simply, will PC Martinez spend more than one season at Atlanta United? Ooh. We're interested in seeing what you guys have to say, so let us know in the comments below what you think. But guys, that's it for us today. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, smash that like button, and share this video because it really does help us a lot. And for Devin, I'm AJ. Thank you guys so much for watching. Woot woot, my kid is pink. <laughs>